This conference will now be recorded. Join this uh, webinar where we would be discussing career opportunities in the field of quantitative finance or as it is also alternative known as uh, in the field of financial engineering. So as you all know, uh, we are extremely lucky to have with us uh, Mr. Bhatia take us uh, through this session uh, just to give a <coughs> very brief uh, background of yeah, I mean, whatever I say would be less in terms of his profile. He has a such a profound experience. Mr. Bhatia actually is an investment banker. He was a derivative trader and then he turned an entrepreneur. He has also been involved with a lot of academic projects as well. Mr. Bhatia has more than 30 years of experience working in leading positions with different MNC investment banks globally in various countries and cities like New York, London, Hong Kong, Sydney, and Mumbai. So he has been with uh, Citibank Global Asset Management London, where he was uh, dealing with alternate investment, alternative investment strategies, he was managing around 10 billion uh, funds there in collateralized debt obligations. He was with Lehman Brothers London in the Global Derivative Products Group as a derivative structurer. He was with Merrill Lynch Capital Markets Hong Kong as a country coverage officer for Indian subcontinent. He worked with Booz Allen and Hamilton in Sydney as a strategy consultant on assignments for one of the largest banks in Australia. And he has been also an interbank foreign exchange trader with Citibank at the start of his career. Mr. Bharatiya, actually, as I said, he uh, then became an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, he started his work as an in uh, financial engineering LLC in Florida. What is so work on artificial intelligence and neural network based trading strategies resulted in the development of the neural trader system, which is the which was the second best performing stra trading strategy in the world in 2004 five. Can you believe it, guys? The second best trading strategy in the world. And uh, that resulted in the creation of a hedge fund, Delray Capital, a firm specializing in developing and trading quantitative trading strategies for the global financial markets. He is also a partner at Neural International Partners. Mr. Bhatia has a wonderful uh, uh, academics as well. He has done his master's from Columbia University, New York, where he was the Dean's Fellow at School of International Affairs and majored in international banking and finance. He also has an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. Right. So uh, that was a very brief profile description of Mr. Bhatia. As I said, we are extremely lucky to have uh, him with us today. Uh, with that, I will uh, hand over the session to Mr. Bhatia. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, thank you so much for taking time out and uh, speaking to these guys. I hope they uh, can take benefit out of this. Okay, thank you very much, Nitish. And uh, welcome to all the participants. I hope uh, you know we have a very interesting and uh, productive discussion. Uh, I'm actually going to spend just about 20 or 30 minutes talking about uh, career opportunities in quantitative finance and financial engineering. And uh, I would love to take questions and uh, you know try my best to answer uh, whatever queries you have. So I hope everybody can uh, see my screen. Is everything working fine, Nitesh? My screen is visible. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, you, you need to share your screen now. I made you the presenter. OK, wonderful. <coughs> OK, are we ready to go? Uh, we don't see the stream yet. I hope you can see the screen, uh, Nitesh. No, actually not. Can you stop sharing the screen and reshare? Okay, 
So what do I log out and come back? Yes, you can do that as well. OK. This conference you, will now be recorded. So a warm welcome to you on a Saturday morning. I hope uh, we have a productive session. Uh, I'm going to spend about just 20, 30 minutes uh, talking about career opportunities in quantitative finance and financial engineering. And then I would love to take your questions and uh, try my best to answer all the queries that you have. See, the good thing about quantitative finance is that there is an abundance of career opportunities, whether it's in investment banks, whether it's in hedge funds, whether it's in algorithmic trading, uh, risk management, whether it is in other areas like software companies, consulting, energy companies, just about academia, fintech as well. So the opportunities are there. Uh, the key thing is, how do you prepare yourself for these opportunities? Because all these opportunities require very specialized and high quality skill sets. And if you acquire those high quality skill sets, you become a very desirable candidate for this wide range of industries who hire people with strong quantitative finance, strong analytical and strong financial engineering backgrounds. Now, financial engineering, it works at the intersection of many domains. And it is the application of mathematics and statistics uh, to the study of financial markets uh, using sophisticated computer science techniques. So we have finance and economics in the red, computer science in green, maths and statistics in blue, and financial engineering is a uh, quantitative finance is really at the intersection of all these uh, three domains. Now, there was a time when trading actually just took place on the floors of stock exchanges. Uh, this is a snapshot from the New York Stock Exchange uh, in the early part of the 20th century. But things have changed. Uh, today, you know, trading on the New York Stock Exchange or on the floor of the Bombay Stock Exchange is not that important. Uh, what is more important is how do you trade uh, using sophisticated computers? So the nature of trading has changed. And because of the ch change in the nature of trading, there is a growing demand for those who have the skill sets in quantitative finance and financial engineering. Here we have uh, Professor Zui Bodhi of Boston University. Now he defines financial engineering as slightly differently. He calls it the application of science-based mathematical models to decisions about saving, investing, borrowing, lending, and managing risk. Now here we have one of the most famous uh, financial engineers in the world, a legendary person, Jim Simmons. He was the founder of Renaissance Technologies, a hedge fund based in New York, which manages over $25 billion. Uh, 2006, Dr. Simmons was named the financial engineer of the year. And he has now retired, but he's still, you know, a remarkably successful man with a net worth in excess of $14 billion. And his income, uh, his per annum income is in the billions of dollars. And he is the number one financial engineer, a number one quantitative uh, finance uh, person in the world. And now he's in, the eight, he's in his 80s and he has founded Math for America, a nonprofit organization. And the mission is to improve mathematics education in America. The interesting thing about Dr. Simmons hedge fund, Renaissance Technologies, is that even if a guy from the Harvard Business School or Wharton or Stanford Business School applies for a job, they won't even bother to call him for an interview. But if you have a master's degree or a PhD in physics, in mathematics, in statistics, electrical engineering or computer science, they would love to talk to you because their philosophy is that we really cannot teach mathematics and advanced physics to someone who has a finance background. But we can teach finance to a mathematician. 
we can easily teach finance to a physicist or to somebody who has a degree in electrical engineering. Now, Jim Simmons, what did he do? He's known as a quant king. Now, retired from his $29 billion hedge fund called Renaissance Technologies. The hedge fund is highly secretive and consistently profitable. It uses a black box strategy known as medallion. And what this black box does is that it implements mathematical models using computer science to find inefficiencies in highly liquid securities. Now, Dr. Simmons is a graduate from MIT. He started his career as a theoretical mathematician and was a code breaker for the United States Department of Defense. He later on headed the mathematics department at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And today he has contributed more than a billion dollars to charitable causes uh, like Math for America and Autism Research. Now, who are financial engineers? What do we do? Uh, we apply mathematical formulas using computer programming to financial strategies, to analyze market trends, and we build data-backed financial models. So a lot of financial engineering or quantitative finance is highly data-driven. So the kind of work that data scientists do is also of great help and great application in quantitative finance. And companies often employ people with advanced degree in financial engineering to work as investment managers, portfolio managers, bankers, or traders to improve the quality of existing investment products. And the primary responsibility of a financial engineer is to have a very thorough knowledge of financial markets, its volatility, and knowledge of financial theories. And this knowledge is used by financial engineers and qualitative finance guys to develop simulations and to predict market behavior. Now, what kind of skill sets are required amongst folks in quantitative finance and financial engineers? One is a focus on modern finance. See, modern finance begins with traditional finance ends. And when I talk of traditional finance, I'm referring to the finance that chartered accountants do. You know, that requires auditing, you know, creating balance sheets, uh, P&L statements, doing financial analysis, ratio analysis, for example. That's where, you know, traditional finance ends. Modern finance is more driven by mathematics, driven by physics and statistics and computer science. <coughs> it requires knowledge of economics and more than economics, it requires the knowledge of econometrics. Then you need computer programming skills in C++, Java, Scala, Python, or in the use of statistical packages like R, MATLAB, SAS, S+, and RAD. Then advanced mathematical knowledge of stochastic calculus and linear algebra comes in very handy. Simply also like that, advanced statistics, knowledge of multivariate probability, distributions, derivatives pricing using lattice trees, closed form solutions, and Monte Carlo simulation are also very, very helpful in the repertoire of skills that a quantitative finance or a financial engineer should have. Then skills like derivatives hedging, which include dynamic hedging, static hedging, as well as option replication strategies come in very handy. Now, careers in quantitative finance and financial engineering are spread across the world, and they are spread across a number of different domains. You could end up working in quantitative research and analysis. You could end up working in development of quantitative and analytical software. You could be building valuation models. You could be doing model validation. You could be doing portfolio management or even portfolio analytics. And then risk management, of course, is a very, very key and important area for quantitative finance specialists. Derivative structuring, that's the job that I used to do at Lehman Brothers. Uh, increasingly, this job is now being done out of India. High frequency trading, algorithmic trading, derivatives trading. So there's a whole wide range of areas in which you guys can actually end up working. 
Now, career opportunities specifically in India. See, what has happened is that major global banks, as a part of their cost-cutting spree, have been moving jobs from New York, London, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Singapore to India. And they're not moving it to Bandra Kurla complex, or to Nariban Point. They're moving it to Pawai, to Goregaon. They're moving it to Pune. They're moving it to Gurgaon. So major banks have opened what are called centers of excellence in India. Uh, just to give you an example, at, when I graduated from IIM Ahmedabad, Deutsche Bank had only 25 people in the entire country in the Bombay office. Today, Deutsche Bank has 20,000 people working for it in North Bombay, in the Goregaon area. So what has happened is that jobs are moving towards India and people who have the requisite skills uh, can find valuable career opportunities first in India and then as you know your career progresses it is quite natural that you will move out to places like Singapore or Hong Kong or London or New York. Now these COEs which are called centers of excellence they support global financial centers in derivative structuring in model building in model validation, risk management, risk reporting, and analytics. Now, here is a snapshot of the kind of jobs that are available in financial engineering in India. Now, this has been taken from iimjobs.com. It's uh, quite unlikely that you will find good jobs in quantitative finance or financial engineering on websites like Monster or Nokri.com. Uh, one place which has uh, quite a lot of good jobs uh, in this domain in India is actually iimjobs.com. You just have to be careful sometimes. Uh, sometimes the head hunters are just resume collectors, and uh, actually there is no job at the back. They just you know post a job because posting is free. But here are some specific examples of companies that are looking for people in this area. So the very first one is from Barclays. Uh, they're looking for an AVP and capital and risk information services. Then there's a job with Cognizant in global capital markets. Then there's a job with Prudential. There's a job with Accenture in risk management. There's some jobs with Ernst & Young, with American Express, and with Tata Capital. And there's a whole range of them. You know, the, the, the list is pretty much endless. Uh, you'll find a variety of opportunities uh, in a variety of areas most of these jobs tend to be concentrated in bombay as well as in bangalore but you will also find opportunities in gurgaon in pune and uh, even hyderabad calcutta and chennai so here there's a whole range of uh, you know possible jobs in risk management uh, this is an area of uh, quantitative finance and uh, if you go to the imjobs.com website, you can take a look at some of the more recent uh, postings over there. <laughs> now, one of the important questions that everybody wants to know is that, yes, if this is such a great domain and pays so well, well, what am I going to earn? Now, I have divided the firms in a tiered manner according to the most desirable firms to work for and the least desirable firms to work for at the bottom. So the bulge bracket global banks like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan, uh, these tend to be the most desirable places to work. They usually will pay the top drawer compensation for the best talent. But please remember that compensation is not the only important thing, the financial compensation. If you are developing tremendous intellectual capital by working at a certain organization, then that is more valuable for your future career progression than just what you're making today. Uh, just to give you an example, when I worked for Lehman Brothers in London, my compensation was not great, but I was working with very smart people, some of the smartest people I've ever worked with. The kind of work that I was doing was excellent, very, very you know, intellectually challenging and cutting edge. Now, when I left Lehman Brothers, I was headhunted and my salary went up 400%. So it went up like, you know, five times. Now, 
that happened simply because my intellectual capital had gone up tremendously. And that intellectual capital ultimately gets translated into financial rewards at some point or the other. Now, amongst the second tier global banks, I've included Citigroup, Bank One, Bank of America, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, and UBS. And some of you may say that, you know, why are these banks in the second tier? The reason is very simple. These banks copy what the bullish bracket banks do. They copy what uh, Goldman Sachs does, what JP Morgan does. Uh, one, one bank whose name is missing over here is Morgan Stanley. Uh, used to be bullish bracket at one time, is now probably second tier. Now, I know for a fact that Deutsche Bank pays 22 lakh rupees per year to fresh MBAs from the top four IAMs. Uh, the reason I know that is that I have actually taught these people. There were just 11 or 12 of them in a classroom uh, at Deutsche Bank. And uh, some of them were from my alma mater, from IIM Ahmedabad. So, you know, over lunch, we talked to each other. And they were quite uh, happy to disclose, you know, what is the compensation and why they joined Deutsche Bank. So they start with 22 lakhs and then, you know, uh, they, they, they progress. But one thing I, good that I have to say about these graduates from the top four IAMs is that you give them the most complex work to do or to build the most complex spreadsheet. And they crank it out in just two or three hours. And actually, they did it for me in classroom. I gave them an assignment. And for two hours, I heard nothing in the class except the click the click of the keyboards. So then we have these Asian banks, the Japanese banks like you know, Mira, banks from Hong Kong, Singapore, China, banks of India, banks of Malaysia. Uh, they want to imitate the second tier global banks. They want to be like Citigroup. They many times hire people from Citigroup as well. Uh, they don't tend to pay as well, but uh, it could be a good starting point. Uh, you know, there is uh, once you acquire knowledge and experience, uh, you don't have to necessarily stay on with the same organization. If you find that uh, you're not being well compensated, uh, the learning opportunity is limited. Then at the bottom of the pile, you have the IT companies, Accenture, IBM, Oracle, the global IT companies. Then we have Infosys, Pro, Cognizant, and Capgemini. They pay six to nine lakh rupees for someone with two years experience. As your experience goes up, they pay between 10 to 15 lakhs. And then as your experience goes up to 10 years, they pay as much as 10 to 25 lakhs. Not the best of places to work, but again, sometimes there is no harm in just getting started if that's the opportunity that's available. Now let's talk about a snapshot of financial engineering jobs overseas. Uh, there is a website for e-financial careers. Uh, this is a snapshot which is taken today. You know, there's jobs in Frankfurt in Germany for valuation and financial engineers. There's an opportunity for a cross-asset financial engineer in Singapore. When we talk of cross-asset, what we mean is someone who has the capability to model a variety of asset classes. Could be fixed income, could be equities, uh, could be commodities, could be energy, uh, could be hybrid asset classes as well, like convertible bonds. Then investment risk analyst, uh, analysts, this is another job in Singapore. Uh, similarly, there's a senior uh, counterparty, uh, sorry, XVA quantitative developer at uh, one of the top uh, global banks. Uh, they pay almost like, you know, 700, 800 pounds per day. Again, here's, you know, a range of different jobs overseas. The good thing about finding a job overseas is that obviously it pays much better than the jobs in India. The flip side is that... Uh, in many places, the cost of living can be very high. And some of the places may not be the most desirable places to live in. Uh, in a place like New York, you could easily be earning 150 to $200,000 a year. But the cost of living is so high and the tax rates are so high that half your salary will go in taxes. And you know the money that you're left over with doesn't even allow my savings, uh, despite such a high salary. Now, here is a website called Wilmot. Uh, Paul Wilmot is a quant, a very famous quant, a PhD from Cambridge in physics. Uh, he serves the quantitative finance community. They offer some uh, you know, online you know, courses as well. 
the online courses are not the best to do because they're taught from London uh, instead of being taught in classrooms. And uh, some of my friends who have joined this program found that they could never complete it because uh, there was too much distance between the participants, the students, and the teachers. But their website has some great opportunities. So there's a job here, for example, for a quant developer with skills in Python and in other te technologies like NumPy, SkyPy, Pandas, Linux, etc. This is for a hedge fund in London. Then there are software developer jobs for a machine learning, artificial intelligence, systematic trading fund, again in London. Uh, another hedge fund in London is looking for a qualitative developer. Then there's a need for a C++ software developer uh, for a high frequency trading firm uh, in London itself. So Wilmot is a good source where you can go and search for opportunities. But one thing that all these jobs require are very strong skill sets. And that is something that you know you have to develop in order to get these jobs. Here is a snapshot of compensation for financial engineers in the USA. You know, the lower side, a few jobs may offer as little as $50,000, but I think those are quite rare. Uh, then there are jobs at the top end offering almost $200,000 a year. But the median salary, which is about $90,000 per annum, just keep in mind that this is not for New York. This is not for San Francisco, which are very expensive cities. Uh, this is not for Boston. Uh, these are compensation packages for the entire country. And in some places, like, you know, a place in Oklahoma or some place inside the middle of America in the Midwest, you know, a $90,000 salary is as good as making $200,000 in a place like New York because the cost of living is much less. So what are the financial engineering career prospects? Now, this is coming from the New York Institute of Finance. Keep in mind one thing. The closer you are to the activities that generate revenue, the more likely you are to be paid well. So if you are a front office person, if you are the rainmaker, you are the one who creates products, you are the one who brings services, you bring in clients, you originate deals or transactions, then your bonus is going to be multiple times your base salary. So if your base salary is just $100,000, and you've done a great job in the year making significant revenues for your bank, you could be taking home $300,000, dollars for that year. It depends upon how much money you bring in. <coughs> Middle office jobs are very important jobs. Unfortunately, despite being extremely important, they don't get paid that well. They are usually paid bonuses which are capped at 100% of base salary. So if you're making a base salary of $100,000, you probably end up with a maximum bonus of another 100000 But the good thing about the being in the middle office is that, again, you learn a lot. And risk management being extremely important, uh, you can very easily progress from the middle office to the front office. The back office, again, a very, very important component of the bank. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the banks don't see it that way um, because the money is not being made there. So they tend to be, obviously, you know, the least uh, paid. So with that, you know, is my you know, presentation. I'll be happy to take questions and uh, answer you know, whatever queries you have. Nitish, uh, how are people going to ask questions? Yes. Uh, so, uh, guys, uh, uh, if, if you have any questions for Mr. Bhatia and uh, me as well, we can do, I mean, we can we can answer questions uh, that, uh, that you might have. So please feel free to ask. Uh, as I have explained over the email so if you have to ask a question you just have to unmute yourself and speak up so please feel free i mean of course we'll go one by one so anybody has any questions
Hello. 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 Sir. Go ahead. Prashant, Hello. Speaking Hello. from Chennai. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for the session. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, how do, uh, for someone with an IT background, how do we move into this financial engineering career? What kind of courses do we do? Or uh, We do have certifications like the FRM, but as I understand, the basic background is going to be something of mathematics and statistics part, that is, or even programming. These are radical skills that we have to learn. So how do we move into these areas? OK, very good question. Um, this gen the gentleman was asking, uh, how do we move from IT into financial engineering or qualitative finance? Well, the simple answer is join a good course. Um, you know, if you do a course in financial engineering or quantitative finance with the Indian Institute of Quantitative Finance or with Columbia University or, you know, MIT um, or with the University of California at Berkeley, now that education acts as the bridge between where you are today, which is in IT, and where you want to be, which is in financial engineering. Now, one of the things to just keep in mind is that when you do a course in financial engineering from Indian Institute of Quantitative Finance, the cost is in rupees. Whereas if you go to Columbia University and you do a course in quantitative finance over there and at the University of California and Berkeley, the cost, the price is in dollars. So there you may be paying $150,000 for the entire course. Now, there is a risk that you're taking, and the risk is this, that uh, if Mr. Donald Trump has his way and he doesn't want any Indians or any Mexicans or anybody from anywhere in the world to come inside the country and they turn down your visa, what do you do? You know, you spend $150,000, but you're back in India and uh, you're unable to get the kind of compensation that you deserve for having made that kind of investment. So a good strategy, which I call a low risk strategy, is that you first do a course in India and acquire the skill sets. You know, a lot of times in India, you know, people, I mean, when I teach at universities, sometimes in India, I go to give a talk. I notice that everybody is talking about getting a certificate, getting a degree. Getting a degree, getting knowledge, or acquiring knowledge are not the, exactly the same thing. So if you study at IIQF, you are most likely going to acquire a lot of skill sets that will help you move out of an IT company and to a good bank. Hopefully, one of the you know, second tier or top tier uh, global banks in India. And then from those banks, you can move to Singapore, you can move to Hong Kong, um, and from New York, Singapore and Hong Kong, once you are at the international circuit, you know, moving to London or New York is, is not that difficult. I hope that uh, that is helpful. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, just one more clarification here. Uh, sure. As I understand, IAQF does have a quantitative finance course. Uh, but I do also see certain other courses run by someone like Paul Wilmot, like CQF, for example, for instance. I just wanted yeah. to know if uh, if you have something ready-made, uh, in case you can, uh, a brief about the various courses that we can do alongside our uh, yes, yes. Work. Now, what, now, yes. Okay. Again, a very good question. Stay away from CQF. Okay. Uh, I have been invited to the Wilmot uh, CQF uh, seminars uh, in Bombay to even speak at um, their conferences organized typically at in Bandra Kurla at either the Trident Hotel or Sofitel Hotel. I advise some of my very close friends at city bank in india not to do their course but my friends did not listen they spent about 25 30 000 pounds and today they are sitting they have not finished their course they don't have a certificate and they just could not you know really understand what the what the instructors were telling them or teaching them from london cqf is 
not a good course, especially for people from our country. It's way too expensive, but um, it's just not good. It's not the it's not the best investment that you can make of your money and your time. IHUF would be far superior to CQF when you look at the risk and the reward. <laughs> Understand. Thank you. Any other questions from any other, you know, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What's your good name? So my name is Vijayan. Okay. Hi, Vijayan. How Am are you? I doing? Uh, I'm doing fine, sir. Um, basically, sir, I have cleared five papers of actuarial science. Okay, very good. And I have commerce background. Okay. And um, basically, in, word engineering is meant for non-medical students who have studied something in IT. Can I also pursue this program? Absolutely, 100%. But let me tell you one thing. The actuarial science program is not easy. It's a pretty tough program. And if you have yes. finished five papers in actuarial sciences, then for me, that is a degree in engineering because it's a very, very tough program. So, and what would be the scope for an actuary pursuing this pro financial engineering program from your <coughs> institute or from abroad? See, it, it would be a good, it would be a very good experience. Uh, it would be a, certainly a very good uh, progression in your career. Uh, the reason it will be a very good career progression is that actuarial jobs in India are still pretty much back office jobs. The real modeling work, the actuarial science work is still done in London, not in India. You are very true, sir. I, I, know, the, I know the industry very well. Uh, the the yes. interesting part is that insurance companies also hire financial engineers. Because a yes, lot sir. of these uh, complex products like derivatives, like collateralized debt obligations, all these products are invested in by insurance companies. See, an insurance company takes your premium every month. Well, they don't just go and put it in the bank. They actually invest it in the markets. And they usually invest it in fixed income markets. And fixed income derivatives tend to be the most complex and the most analytically demanding derivative products. So if you have done five courses in actuarial sciences, then if you combine that with a program from IAQF, that will be enormously benefit beneficial to you. Uh, you will be able to find uh, good jobs in either an insurance company in Singapore or Hong Kong, or you will be able to move to a good quality bank. So I would definitely encourage you, even if you have a commerce background, uh, the fact that you have a commerce background is irrelevant now because you have demonstrated a strong knowledge of statistics and mathematics by doing five papers in actuarial science. Which, that's, a, that's a big achievement, by the way. So, uh, mm -hmm. that's, Thank that's, you, sir. Can I also work in investment sector or investment banking department of foreign banks or I have can I would be able to work only in actuarial department only? No, no, you will be able to work in many different uh, branches. Uh, you will be in able data to work science. <laughs> you will be able to work in data science, but even better than data science, you'll be able to work in risk management because risk management at the end of the day has the same application of probability distributions uh, that you see in actuarial sciences. Operational yes. risk management, a credit risk management, a market risk management. Uh, deploys a wide range of probability distributions. So normal distributions, Poisson distributions, a convolution of different types of distributions. That takes place in risk management. So risk management would be a very, very good fit for someone with your actuarial science background. And one thing I want to ask, what, which programming language should I learn to pursue this program? I am currently learning R. Very good. R is a very good starting point. If uh, you have been able to master R, you will have no problems in mastering Python. Uh, it's yeah. like saying that I run 100 meters like Usain Bolt. Can I run 200 meters? Yeah, of course you can. So, Means Python you know, is difficult than R. 
maybe it's a bit different, uh, but I don't really think that. See, once you have understood one programming language, to acquire another programming language is to just familiarize yourself with the syntax. Because programming, the core of programming is the logic. You know, how do you use different types of loops? How do you use different types of algorithms? How do you build it? Uh, that's the core. So if you have mastered one programming language, you can master others very easily. Thank you, sir. OK, any other, uh, ladies and gentlemen, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, good, good morning, sir. Ravi here from Mumbai. Actually, uh, thank you for your session. I just wanted to know one thing that uh, currently I'm pursuing uh, FRM1 training from IIQF. Maybe Nitish can also join in the in the answer. Uh, but wanted to know the progression as to how I will progress from FRM1 training. What should be the next uh, next uh, training uh, that I should take in order to move ahead with uh, with the financial engineering uh, maybe a career opportunities. Nitish, I think you will be better positioned to answer that question. Yes, uh, Ravi. Uh, Again, it depends on what kind of profiles you uh, want to target. Uh, if you want to target uh, your finance engineering profiles, then of, co of course you have to do uh, another broad-based course like the Applied Mathematical Finance for Engineers. But if you are targeting advanced jobs in the risk management field or like some of the other derivative analytics jobs, then post your FRM or even after your FRM part one, you can just do the derivative valuation and risk analytics course. Uh, FRM teaches you the theory, whereas the derivative valuation and risk analytics will teach you the application areas of that theory in derivatives and risk. The actual implementation part, you can combine both of that to apply to a lot of good profiles. OK, OK. So uh, Nitish, uh, looking at the uh, IIQF uh, website, I see a lot of course. So it's actually a bit confusing. I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, as a person, I don't uh, have much idea of what course uh, will teach me what. So, uh, do sure. you have any 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 uh, may, some uh, description of what the course is and? Uh, yeah, of course, so every course would have its own description. Yeah, IQF does. Uh, I mean, conduct uh, around four to five programs uh, for various aspects of financial engineering and risk management. And what course you should be doing? Uh, as I said, it depends on what kind of profiles you okay. want to target. Okay. okay. So. Okay. Again, if you see the website and if you want me to give a brief description of each of the courses, I, yeah. I'll give, but like maybe uh, too much time we cannot spend here on this question, but yeah, yeah. I'll give yeah. a brief, brief answer, right? So okay. as, as I was mentioning earlier, if you want to go into pure finance engineering profile, so you'll have to do the course Applied Mathematical Finance for Engineers, which okay. uh, goes into uh, in-depth uh, mathematical modeling, right? So derivation of the mathematical models then implementation and all that stuff so which uh, okay. goes deep into stochastic calculus and all that right okay. now uh, again if you are somebody who may not have that much of mathematical depth or by nature you don't want to target uh, those in-depth quant modeling jobs maybe you want to target a little bit uh, le uh, profiles which are more targeted towards risk management and a little less math uh, oriented roles then other courses you can do is like a certificate program in quantity finance and risk management where like mathematics is you can say to the frm level all right but the good okay. thing about that course is it teaches both the theory plus the practical model building okay it might not go into in-depth mathematics but it still goes into the application side so how you value a derivative instrument in excel vba and python right how you build risk models in excel excel vba and python so all these things are taught from a practical point of view now said that, that certificate program in quantity finance and risk management, it's actually divided into two parts, okay? So okay. what we have done is the first two and a half months teaches you the basics. Basics would mean uh, advanced uh, quants, right? So uh, basically uh, advanced statistics, econometrics, probability, time series analysis, and like uh, some of the mathematics required for understanding derivatives, right? And then we go into advanced financial markets and products. So okay. for those like you who are already doing FRM level one or by your job or by your degree, you have learned this uh, statistics, econometrics, probability, basic mathematics and all this stuff. And as well as like the 
financial markets and products knowledge if you already have then of course you don't need to repeat this basic stuff right so then yeah, you can yeah. the first two and a half months and you can directly start from the advanced part which is the advanced three and a half months where the actual application areas are taught so in that case if you are only doing the advanced part it is called a certificate program in derivative valuation and risk analytics if you are doing the entire six months course then it is called a certificate program in quantity finance and risk management so it depends on your background in, in that case right okay. okay and then there are other courses on algorithmic trading okay which is a separate field so if you are somebody who wants to apply all these things to trading right then uh, algorithmic trading would be another uh, course which you can see and look at okay 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 so, yeah, thank the you four, thank the, you the four courses or five courses that are there uh, they are they are, they are there for very specific reasons yeah yeah because a lot of time things things do appear uh, overlapping each other so can't make out which which yeah, course should be the best there yeah. would be commonality because at the end of the day basics remain same right but the application yeah. areas are different and uh, the each course is taught uh, depending on the application area that you want to target okay okay nitish thank you yeah hi i i have a question uh, this is krishna from bangalore now um, see i, I hold uh, i have degree in mathematics and uh, i am from the it background i also in a advanced diploma in management studies from singapore now my core is only it uh, more on the pre sales now and as you can see i have finished my degree uh, decades ago uh, i the calculus and all the parts are pretty rusty so that's the primer course i have gone through the uh, brochure will the primer course alone uh, help in catching up with you know the uh, requisites for uh, doing this afme okay so Ritesh, that yeah yeah oh uh, uh, yes so krishnan uh, just to understand your question again better right so if uh, I, i just to see that if i have not missed any point so you want to understand whether the primers that are there in the applied mathematical finance for engineers course would that help you in learning the main course is that the question in brief that's right yeah of course yeah. So, so the that is how the primers are designed right so okay so just to go one step back if you see the applied mathematical finance for engineers course okay so we have four primers one on mathematics one on statistics or one on finance and the other on programming okay and since these four areas would be applied quite in depth during the course so we expect the candidates to have background in all these four areas the basics at least right and if somebody is uh, again depending on your background you would need to do a brush up from the right primer of course you can once you register for the course you would get access to all the four primers so if you have time and if you can do you can brush up using all the four primers or of course uh, uh, you can you can selectively do the primers where you think your background is a little weak or like you think a little bit uh, 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 a brush up is needed maybe because you have done something a long time back right so yes the primers are a good starting point and they give you a background uh, knowledge or in, in the sense uh, the things that you need to no or the thing basics that you need to know to understand the later part of the main course okay okay yeah thanks rajesh yeah. all right yeah, i have another question on the languages i saw multiple languages on the c++ python uh, the um, r matlab so which is a language that to be um, know that we should focus is it r or is it uh, all of these or one of this or what is it because each language has its own uh, flavor okay so mr bhatia would you like to answer briefly on that and if i if do you want me to add on that or do you want me to answer that please <laughs> see amongst the programming languages the simplest one to learn or to pick up is visual basic in excel uh, that's the easiest one to pick up and then you can move to you know languages like r and python uh, that should be sufficient uh, you know to get started r would be a good starting point 
Okay, but the course per se would be focusing on all of this or any particular language. Uh, is it R or Python? <coughs> so, okay. See, there will so, be Krishna, different modules. Talk about different. Uh, sorry, uh, so can I answer that? Yeah, yeah, please. So, Krishnan, yeah, as Mr. Bhatia pointed out, right, so uh, there are multiple languages that are used, but of course, uh, in one course, you can learn, you cannot learn everything, right? So, the first, the idea is to uh, go for a language which would, is relatively easy to understand and uh, which has gained ex acceptance also right so so r is one good language definitely as mr bhatia has mentioned but again r has a few limitations as well okay and python in comparison is a more complete language as far as i understand or rather we understand okay and uh, python was ha what has happened is uh, again r ha r is like a very good language for doing just statistical analysis but when it comes to financial engineering Python is gaining a little bit more prominence in the industry uh, being a more complete languages and another aspect is having more well-developed libraries already built in. Okay, so in com uh, as a starting point, either R or Python is good enough, right? Uh, but Python has a slight edge and that is why we have started actually applying more of Python in our courses and this particular program applied mathematical finance for engineers. Currently, the implementation is entirely taught in Python. Okay. Okay. Okay, clear. But once you learn uh, implementation in one language, as Mr. Bhatia was explaining, right? So key is to, if you're a non-programmer, uh, or even if you do programming, right? And I mean, if, uh, if, if once you know the implementation in one language, right? And if you know the other language, you can always do that. See, there's no denying the fact that, that the highest places, right? C++ is still used, but again, learning implementation in C++ is, or like C, C is not everybody's cup of tea, right? And if somebody is a good enough programmer, then I mean, if he has learned in Python, he can always co convert that into C codes or C++ codes, right? On the other hand, if, if, if programming is weak for somebody, he's just started out to learn, then he will never be able to start with learning implementation in C or C++, right? In that case, Python is very helpful. So it's actually good for both, both kind of audience. I mean, whether you are an extreme prog uh, knowledgeable programmer or you're starting out with programming. Right. So, so that is why this is like uh, what, can, what you can say is the consensus language where we where we arrived and uh, at this point, the best available one. OK. OK. Thank you. Yeah. And in the proctored exam, do we uh, use the calculator or Excel or these tools or is it all a multiple uh, MCQ Sorry, type of questions? questions? Hello. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the voice was OK, but somehow actually the voice got a little muffled. I could not hear the question. Though. Yeah. See, in the proctored exam, are the questions MCQ based or do we need to do some programming where we can use Excel or R and other tools? How does the exam pattern? Yeah, sure. So again, uh, the evaluation actually, if you see for the applied mathematical finance for engineers is actually uh, two things. One is the project or the assignments that you get at the end of the course. Okay. So these projects and assignments would require you to build practical models based on what you learn during the course, right? So that is the one thing. And the second, when you talk about the exam, actually it's an open book exam uh, and it would be proctored and monitored online, right? So it can be a combination of both MCQs as well as, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, broad questions as well, okay? So it's not a one single format. Uh, there would be a mix of both kind of questions. The key is to basically go through the programming lecture, I mean, program lectures very keenly and practice. If you do that, you should be able to solve that exam uh, questions as well. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yes, any other question? Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Rajan. Uh, just a quick question uh, I wanted to ask you is that uh, w what do you think the best course of action for a fresher to enter into this industry, investment banking industry, uh, while having knowledge in engineering and also a master's degree in quantitative finance? Oh. Okay, uh, Akhil, I, I, Dinesh, can you just repeat the question because I didn't understand it very well. I couldn't hear it. 
Yeah. So, what do you think the best course of action for a fresher uh, to to land to land into a uh, a fresher position? Is your Within question the, is your question like what courses you should do to get into investment no, banking? No. Is that is is that the question? No, no, no. Like, uh, how do how do I start looking for a uh, starting starting for job in this industry like i also i finished uh, my your voice is actually echoing so i think you have uh, typed a question in the chat window as well if uh, if you permit let me read it out and uh, yeah, there's, there's some problem okay. with my microphone i'm sorry okay. so uh, I, i'll read out the question that you have mentioned in the chat window actually there are a couple of more questions and so this would be the last two three questions because uh, it's already uh, <laughs> almost 5 past 12 right so we'll take two and two to three questions and then we'll wrap up by uh, maybe in another five minutes okay yeah so akhil I, uh, your question i guess is uh, what would you think a good course of action for a fresher with engineering mechanical and quantity finance msc in finding a job i'm still not very sure of the question but uh, mr bhatia uh, did you uh, get the gist of the question you see if you just have an engineering degree and you're looking for your first job uh, Landing a job in an in investment bank is going to be extremely difficult. So if you're looking to just get started in your first job, and if you're an engineer, uh, very often the IT companies is where you start. And then you start acquiring skills in financial markets, uh, in trading, in developing trading strategies, in developing financial models. You can do a course with IAQF that will add to your existing engineering degree. And then you can progress to an investment bank. Hello? It's a kill. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you get your answer? Yes, Vinay, for a commerce background student, I think uh, doing one of the programs um, in quantitative finance at IAQF would be a great step. But you will have to start with some of the more basic level courses first. And as you build up your skills, then you can go to the more advanced level. Yes, Vinay, so uh, we do have courses for people from commerce background also who want to join this industry, as I was explaining a while earlier. We can, you, we can, or rather, you can look at the course certificate program in quantitative finance and risk management. There, the maths is a little tailored so that even uh, finance guys can do an enter into this field. Uh, if you want, uh, we can discuss that in more detail on a personal uh, phone call. course it would be challenging no doubt because even tailored mathematics uh, would mean good amount of mathematics and statistics because this field uh, demands that right so rather than challenging IQF has a way of uh, teaching things in, in a very easy and lucid way the, the ch main challenge is a lot of commerce guys are, are, are a little if I may use it use that word a little afraid of mathematics statistics if you are not someone who is very afraid of mathematics statistics, if you have an open mind, uh, you have a, a, a good chance of picking it up because we do teach you in a way where like you should understand. Um, Mr. Bhatti, a couple of more chats actually, if you can take up and then we'll wrap up. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so one was from so she said that like is it better to go for part-time courses or full-time courses if currently working in IT now how beneficial are CFA and FRM programs no, CFA and FRM programs are also uh, quite good programs in fact um, IAQF conducts classes for both CFA and FRM as well no, just to correct <laughs> we do only for FRM actually CFA we are oh, only FRM courses. okay all right <laughs> So my, uh, you know, now whether you should do part time or you should do full time, that really depends upon 
your personal situation, uh, especially your financial situation. Um, you know, if you have the luxury of doing a full-time program, uh, you know, that'll be that'll be best. That'll be the best. But if you can't uh, do a full-time program, then you do a program in the evenings or on the weekends. Uh, that will also be you know fine. The important thing is to acquire the skill sets. Now you could actually acquire some skill sets even by yourself uh, without doing any co-op program. But uh, doing one of the IIQF courses uh, in a structured manner will definitely help you in acquiring the right skill sets uh, very fast and more effectively. Right. And the last question would be from Zayed. He has to get a, a question going back. So Zayed, if you're there, just to answer your question. Uh, he has asked, how can a person with zero to one year experience with a degree in risk and start off? So first is the Zayed, uh, you have to give me some idea, a little bit idea about your background. So Zayed, if you're there, you can unmute and speak up. Zayed, you there? Hi, Zayed. Are you there? So, Zayed actually has left. So, maybe uh, <coughs> I'll discuss with him later on that question. I'll give him a call and answer that. Since he's not there, so he's not answering this question. Okay, Harsh, uh, if you are pursuing the CFA, that's very good. But uh, remember that uh, CFA and financial engineering are quite different. Um, in the CFA program, you know, you're basically learning to become a research analyst or an equity analyst. That's what the CFA prepares you for. But if you have a CFA degree, that's uh, wonderful. Um, you can combine that with a program in uh, qualitative finance or financial engineering and it will be a very wonderful combination so i would encourage you uh, to you know do both of them both cfa as well as uh, you know a program in quantitative finance uh, are you talking about the world quant university of igor tuchinsky yes okay <laughs> The, see, I was asked to teach the World Quant University, but um, there is a bit of a, you know, not so ethical stuff going on over there. <coughs> They're trying to offer that uh, degree from the World Quant University for almost free. It's actually free, but since they are not paying any money to instructors either, they're not able to get any good instructors. So Igor Tuchinsky is a billionaire. He wants to run this charity, but he wants other people who are not billionaires to do it for him for free. So I actually turned down that opportunity. So I have no idea as to who are the instructors over there or what is their quality. Uh, I very much doubt if any good instructors are going to come to the World Quant University unless you know they actually you know, pay market level compensation to the instructors. Okay. Okay, is that it, Nitish? Yes, I will just briefly answer one question from Swati and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Krishnan, uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time. So your question, if you can call me, I can, I'll be happy to discuss in detail. But briefly, to answer Swati, the structure of uh, these programs. Uh, yes, Vinay. Uh, if you have received my emails, my contact details are already there. But I'll, I'll mention over the chat window here as well. Uh, Swati, for the certificate program in quantity finance and risk management, is a certificate program in applied mathematical finance for engineers. It is. Uh, 155,000 for the postgraduate program in algorithmic trading, it is 85,000. 
and uh, please uh, feel free to call me uh, my number i am given in giving in the chat window and this is my email id which i am mentioning now this is all contact details already there in the emails that you have received uh, but i'll be i'll be happy to answer any more questions or have further discussions in detail with any of you on, uh, on our courses or in general career opportunities and other things as well. Uh, if you have other questions also, please feel free to ask me or call. But uh, now we're running a little out of time. So we'll wrap up the session. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhatia, for uh, your time. Uh, thank you guys for attending the session. Look forward to hear from you if you have any other questions. Thank you again, Mr. Bhatia. Okay, thank you very much.